Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Welcome to another episode of Classic Molo Plays, where we review the best, the worst, and the ugliest of all this week's cafe action. My name's Rob Williams, and joining me here in the commentary wall is Confucius. G'day, Rob, and what a week it has been. We've seen a couple of young players come up from Darwin's to try their hand at the big league. Let's just say the results have been mixed. Let's get stuck into the footage now with a look at how young Ed Pritchard did. Now, Eddie, 19 years old, made a spectacular debut last semester. The question, though, can he deliver in an assessment period when the going is just that much tougher at the Merlot level? Because this isn't Darwin's anymore, so... Here comes Eddie, slowly does it, good pace. No mates obviously about, but oh no, who is that? Ex-girlfriend at two o'clock and Ed is rattled. Yes, Ed dumped last week, that's an injury no amount of physio is gonna help. But where's he going, Con? He's retiring already, this is not good. Mm, retreating into a world of study and pain, the SSNH. He's going for a drink in the fountain, there's no waterworks from Ed just yet. He isn't tearing up, but he does have some big decisions to make. Mm, this is definitely a crossroads for a young player who's yet to truly prove his mettle. What we're about to see now from Ed is going to be what counts. And what's this, Con? He's turning around and headed straight back to the cafe. Faster than you can say mezzo mezzo. What's going through his head? I'm not sure, but he's ordering a coffee and it's a non-takeaway. I can't decide whether this is stupidity or brilliance from mm. the young player. Risky business indeed. I mean, he's committed to a sit-down beverage, but as yet has no visible friends in the Merlot vicinity. Now, let's have a look at Ed's options with the help of our Ibis Eye Tree Cam. What we know is that the Eng boys are on the other side of that tree, but they're almost completely obscured from Ed's current position. And let's not forget about the danger zone here either. It's looking like Ed's current path is going to take him right by the X. I don't know that he can avoid eye contact for that long. Now it looks like he's reading a text message here, but I'm sure that that's a dummy text. A move that Ed in fact pioneered six months ago. And yes, he's using it beautifully here, Con. Buying himself some valuable time. And here we have it, the moment of recognition. He's spotted his fuzzy mate at a distance of more than 10 meters. And yep, he's now on his way. What's this? Through the garden bed, he's gone off road. He's rewriting the playbook here, Con. Just giving a casual wave. He's just showing off now. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Nor I. And there's a spare seat available. This is a fairy tale finish to a potentially disastrous Molo's outing. Mm, truly, Ed Pritchard is the crema de la crema of this exciting new generation of cafe players. What about that brunette at the counter? I'll tell you what, mate. I'll be buying my paninis from her from now on. Oh, and we're back. It's time to take a look at third year Vanessa Bainbridge. So here she comes now from the grassy knoll. She spied some friends in the center of Merlot's and she's just about to take her seat now. So far, so good. I'm told her ambition is to work at the Hog after graduating. The Hog? Am I saying that right, Tom? Wouldn't have a clue, Rob, but let's look at something we both know about and that's the Merlot Arena. So we've got one friend here, yep, she's off. That's right, bye bye. Now what about these two lovebirds? And what about the guy beside them? He's really? looking a bit fishy. Look, you're not wrong, Con, but they're up and Vanessa's been left with the unknown male. Stuck with a mutual friend here. That's not good. Well, obviously these two don't have a lot to talk about. He's buried himself in the business section. And what's Vanessa up to? Yep, gone to the bag for salvation. Let's go to our commentator on the field. How's it going, Otto? Can't complain Con and neither can Vanessa. She has no one to blame but herself for this mess. A clumsy, rushed exit would have still been better than being stuck with this bozo. Yes, we've all been there, but what matters now is how Vanessa deals with this situation. Now Vanessa's standing up, but the bag's been left there. She must be going to get a coffee. This has panic play written all over it, because nothing's been solved, only delayed. I can only hope that this black is a short one. But who's this fellow in front of her? There's flirting, giggling and hair tossing from Vanessa. All for this cool cucumber from the big smoke. And now an invitation to sit down from Mr. Wright. But what about Mr. X? Vanessa's going into the alley now, abandoning her friend's friend. And boy, how the game has changed. You just wouldn't have seen this behaviour ten years ago. Hell would have frozen over, I'm telling you, Con. Here we have two Merlot veterans, Russell Hinchy and Kit Barker, appalled at what they've just seen. And big Russ looks particularly disappointed in Vanessa, who it seems is all froth and no shot. Ha! <laughs> Good one, Con. Vanessa's still giggling though and flirting inside. It looks like this law student just committed the perfect crime. Except she's forgotten one thing, boys. Her bag! Mr. X has given up and gone, but the bag remains. Meanwhile, the birds have gotten to it and there are female sanitary products everywhere. 
It seems the big guy up in the sky has a sense of humour after all. Too right, Ol. We've seen triumph and disgrace here, the usual order at the Merlot's Cauldron. Where every day is a grand final. I'm Rob Williams. And I'm Confucius. Catch you next week.